Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about how electrical signals travel through a neuron. Stay tuned. It may sound strange to think that an electrical signal travels through each of your brain cells. And that's because we don't have wires or plug ourselves in. But in fact, this was demonstrated by Luigi Alvani way back in 1791 by applying a little bit of electricity to some uh, severed frog legs that there is in fact a little spike of electricity that controls our nerve cells. So this little spike of activity is called an action potential. And that's when an, a little spike of electrical charge happens inside the cell. Now, it's not as complicated as it seems. In order to understand an action potential, you really only need to understand three things. The first you need to understand is diffusion. And that's the idea that molecules tend to flow from areas of high concentration to lower concentration. The second thing you need to understand is that uh, there are things called ions, which are just atoms or molecules with charges. Charged ions uh, have an electrical charge. So some of them are positively charged, some of them are negatively charged. So ions like sodium, calcium, potassium tend to be positively charged, and we see those a lot in uh, the functioning of the nervous system. And chloride is negatively charged. So sodium chloride, table salt, has a positively charged sodium and a negatively charged chloride. They stick together, they make salt. Now, the other thing you need to know is just like uh, you might expect, ions that have opposite charges are attracted to each other, but ions that are, have the same kind of charge, either positive or negative, are repelled from each other. Now this serves the purpose of, if you get too many of the same charge in one place, it creates a pressure that makes them kind of push against each other. Finally, the last piece of information you need to know is that there are things called ion channels. And ion channels are just little holes that allow one type of ion through. The other thing you need to know about ion channels is that ion channels can be triggered to open under certain conditions. For example, a small change in the total electrical charge surrounding the channel. So a little bit of increase in electrical charge maybe can make that channel either open or close. Okay, in order to visualize this, let's go down to Neuron Street. I hear there are a lot of really cool clubs on Neuron Street, and of course the best club on Neuron Street is the first club you get to on the street called Club Neuron. Outside the club, you've got a whole bunch of sodium uh, and it's positively charged, waiting for those doors to open. Inside, you've got some potassium dancing around. But look at the charges. Which side is more positive? You can get a rough count inside and outside to be able to tell which way is more positively charged. So if you look, we've got a lot of sodium outside the cell uh, that's all positively charged. And inside, we've got a whole bunch of potassiums dancing around and they are also positively charged, but there's more sodium outside than there is potassium inside. So the outside is more positive. Now we're gonna measure what's going on inside the club, right? So if the outside is more positive, then which side is more negative? Mm. Well, there are no negative ions pictured here. In a neuron, there are negative ions both inside and outside the cell. But for simplicity's sake, I left them off this diagram. But the important thing to realize is that an electrical potential is relative. So if one side is more positive, then that means the other side is more negative. Okay, so this is how we start off. The inside of the club or the cell starts off with a negative electrical potential. And let's say we measure it and it comes in at minus 40 millivolts. It's electrical because the electrical charge of the ions is different inside the club and outside the club. In other words, it is 
polarized. It has poles. It has a positive end and a negative end. Now those sodiums outside are all crowded together and they want to get in. Okay, so now a bouncer named Sodium Channel is hanging out at the door and when he gets the signal, he opens up the rope and sodium ions start pushing through. The signal is a small change in the potential from the other parts of the cell. In other words, it is a voltage-gated ion channel. So once that sodium starts flooding in, what happens to the charge inside the cell? Notice that as each sodium flows in, it brings its positive charge with it. So the charge inside the cell is getting less negative. Right? So it's going up. Or sometimes we call this depolarization because it's no longer polarized. So these sodiums are flooding in, flooding in, and the cell is inside the cell is becoming more and more positive. Eventually, this ion channel says, uh, uh, that's enough, and closes the door. By this point, a whole bunch of sodium ions are in the club, dancing around, and the charge is actually positive now. So the current state of the cell is a really high positive charge. Now the club has a new problem, over-occupancy. If the fire marshal catches this, then uh, they're going to shut everything down. So we've got another bouncer. His name? Potassium Channel. Sodium Channel's brother. And he opens his own door. He starts kicking out these potassiums that have been hanging around way too long. So as the potassiums leave, the charge inside the cell starts going down. In other words, we start repolarizing or repolarization. The problem is he's a little bit slow to close the door and he winds up kicking out a few too many potassiums. So the charge inside the cell winds up even more negative than it was when they started. There's fewer positive ions inside than there were at the beginning. And this is when the neuron is a state called hyperpolarization. This is a hyperpolarized neuron. It's more negative than it normally would be. And so then that potassium channel closes and that keeps uh, everybody in place. Finally, the problem is you've got all this sodium on the inside of the club and all the potassiums outside. So you have to return everything back to normal somehow. So in order to do that, we have something called a sodium potassium pump. Its job is exactly what it sounds like. It's a pump. They, its job is to swap a sodium and a few potassiums and reset everything back to normal. Now this is the most energy intensive part of this whole process. During this period, the cell can't fire again right away. And so we are in what we call a refractory period. You can picture a, a whole string of clubs down the street after one club goes through this process, that triggers the next club and the next club and so on. Well, the same thing happens with a neuron. When this, uh, there's a whole bunch of these sodium and potassium channels uh, all down the axon of the neuron, and as one of them fires, that triggers the channels on the next neuron down to open. And so this whole thing, just like dominoes falling, propagates down the neuron. Now this whole thing happens very quickly. It varies, but each neuron fires between, uh, estimate, good estimate is between one and 200 times per second. This process is an all or none process. It either fires or it doesn't fire. There's no halfway point in firing. It happens in one direction. It only goes in a single direction down the axon, at least in the vertebrate nervous system. It's possible to speed this process by attaching what's called the myelin sheath to the axon, which is a specialized cells that sort of wrap themselves like insulation on a wire around the axon. And what this does is it creates places called nodes of Ranvier between those cells that the action potentials fire at, and they don't have to fire in the places that are covered by the cell. So in general, it gets faster. Finally, what happens at the end of the cell? Well, when it gets to the end or the axon terminal, terminal bouton, that triggers the release of neurotransmitters. 
which eventually cross a synapse and bind to receptors on the next cell, uh, which starts the process all over again in that cell. So that's how an electrical signal can propagate through the nervous system. I hope this video has been helpful. Please like and subscribe, and I'll have more videos about the neuroscience and biology of behavior coming up soon. See you next time.